All right, guys, I'm going to show you to do a little bit of <clears throat> sculpting here in Mudbox. Um, we talked a little bit about Dynamesh with um, using Dynamesh by just, you know, making, grabbing one of our Maya scenes and just playing with it a little bit, opening, importing it as an OBJ. So I'll do the same thing here. So we're going to File, we're going to go to Import, and let's go and grab our tree trunk, which we were messing with before. This should be the good guy. Now be careful, remember when I extruded my object in, in object mode, when I did that, you'll notice that I kind of inverted it a little bit. Be careful with that. Sometimes Maya will read that inappropriately and flip your normals. So if it does, I can show you how to fix it real quick. We'll see if it's flipped. Nope, this is the good one. When you do import objects into uh, my box, keep in mind what happens is they come in really dinky. Notice he's really small. So we can actually make him bigger or leave him as is. It should be okay if we do leave him. Earlier versions of Mobox would sometimes have a harder problem if it was a smaller object. But I'm gonna keep him uh, small. In this particular case, we should be fine. Again, I'm gonna show you how to sculpt. Um, just keep in mind again though, they do come in quite dinky. Um, also, Mobox versus um, ZBrush. ZBrush auto capped my geo, you'll have to go and take care of that in ZBrush or actually out of ZBrush. Um, either one, but Mobox take it exactly the way it is. And the reason why, let me talk about the difference here real quick. Mobox uses true polygons and ZBrush uses 2.5D. They use like a voxel um, based information, especially for Dynamesh. Otherwise, it's their own 2.5D uh, subdivisions that you'll be playing with. <coughs> So what I like about Mobox is actually a lot easier to learn compared to ZBrush. ZBrush's interface is something to be desired. It looks a little bit like the love child of Bryce and Poser, um, but you do get used to it. Um, I still like ZBrush, but Mobox, again, is a lot easier to work with. So navigation. First up, it moves just like Maya if you're used to it. Um, if I'm going to right mouse, Alt, allows me to zoom in and out. Um, Alt and middle mouse, Dolly. Alt and left mouse allows me to rotate around the object. Now, if any time you're far away from the object and you want to get closer to it, what you can do is hit the A key. That'll center the object into the scene. All right, so we're going to do some sculpting here. And note also in 2013 when you initially sculpt, the fall off works really nicely. It isn't too ridiculous. Um, in the older versions, a lot of times you have to go directly into fall off and adjust that if there's a problem. So let's go in here and go to our new layer. Now anytime you make a new layer, we're making a new layer and this is kind of a, a subdivision layer. And you're going to make multiple of them of different resolutions. Now we need to assign, when we make a new layer, you need to assign that layer, you need to assign that model to that layer. So once I make it, you want to click on your model and you'll see that zero is now assigned to that layer. Now say we want to bump up the resolution, we do Shift D for that. You'll see it'll tell you the poly count on this guy. We have 20,000, almost 30,000 at this point. I'm going to go and create a new layer. And then with that layer selected, I'm going to select my model and bam, we have a new subdivision of one up on this guy. I'm going to do Shift D again. and I'm going to, you know, cut this up a couple times. You'll notice that blanks out automatically because it already has a subdivision connected to it. I'll make a new one. Then with this new one, I'll click on the model again. Watch out, there we go. We got a, another subdivision level on that. And we'll do Shift D one more time, cut that up. We're now at uh, 40, uh, 4,400. Um, so with that set up, I'm gonna do a new layer and click on the model and boom, there we go. Third division set up for this guy. I wanna do one more. So we'll do uh, Shift D one more time, create a new layer, select on the model, assign that model to that layer, and there you go. Cool. Now anytime you want to um, fluctuate and shuffle through these, you do page up or page down. That allows you to go through these different layers. And as you sculpt on them, you can actually change the transparency. There's a transparency bar here, works like Photoshop, except it's more in a vertical pattern than a horizontal, and allows you to scroll through that particular object. So we're in sculpting mode here. So what we can do, we can load our own um, texture here. Now stamp, let me talk a little bit about stamp. Stencil doesn't work so good when it comes to sculpting. I mean, this guy's mainly for texture painting, which I'll make another video on later. But stamp kind of controls our brush. It is similar to um, 
ZBrush's alphas. So we actually can load any particular brush that we want. Bark, you know, granite, whatever it is that we feel is going to fit what we're working on. Now if we want to make this a little more petrified, we could select cliffs. And, oh, this is where I forgot to hook in my Wacom. Because I don't like to sculpt without it. Make sure you always do because you will kick yourself because not having your Wacom ready, like me, you'll find out you feel naked. Alright, so let's go and put this in here. Let me plug this in. There we go. The horns have assembled. Um, using my little mini bamboo here. Alright, so let's go and do some sculpting. So we got this guy set up. Now, if you want to change your brush size, you hit the B key and it'll increase it and decrease it. And um, we selected our rock here. Let's see how this guy's going to displace. Oh, looks like he's a little strong, and that's okay. Um, you actually can remedy a little bit of that just based on um, each one of these have a different default. So in this case, this guy's a little bit strong. So we can go in here, go to our fall off. And we can increase the uh, decrease this, excuse me. Make a little, dumb it down a little bit. We can do that a little bit more. You can also mess with your displacement as well. So we can lower our strength. There we go. A little bit more than that. And the fall off will lower this down a little bit. And there's multiple fall offs to choose. You'll see them all over here. These are the defaults, but you can also save this guy. It says store two, and you can place him in here to be able to mess with your object. And I keep my brush a little bit bigger if I want. And we can make this guy look like he's like petrified wood. And it works pretty well. It's not too shabby. Now again, just like with ZBrush, if you hit a corner, it can get a little hard on the edges. Um, but they've improved some and made some great improvements here with Mudbox, which I actually like a lot. One of them being is our grab tool, which works really nicely and uh, a lot better than it used to. In other words, it's a little bit more organic, has a nice little even drop off so we can pull on our model any way that we desire and then we can also paint on it a little bit. So go back to sculpt. There we go. Now if you need to smooth it out you can switch to smooth. And we can smooth that out just a tad. Get that a little less sharp. Some of these areas. Hitting alt to rotate around. You can already see we're getting actually pretty good results, but you'll notice that one time when I was painting here at an angle, it got a little weird. So again, we can maybe smooth that out just a little bit to keep that from getting too odd on us. And uh, some of the other tools we have, we can pinch. So let me lower my brush size for a second. So if I want to crease an area, I can pinch it. Look at that, starting to pinch there. If you want like a really gnarly looking uh, seam on your object. Um, we can go back to sculpt and let's go to our stamps again. And again we can load other ones if we want. So in this case I can say let's load bark. I think I have a bark around here somewhere. Let's see where I put him. No, it's not in there. So let's try lectures. Lectures. And yeah, it's not here, so we'll just see bark. Bark. A little more organized with the ZBrush than I am with the mud box. Just because a ZBrush kind of a little bit forces you more. Oh, I can't believe bark isn't around. That's okay. So we'll just use theirs. Um, what's a world without bark? It's insane. So we can actually go in here. There's leaf veins too, which are kind of nice. And oh, you see in my earlier ones here, there's an edge here. We can mess with this guy a little bit. Is that the one? No, this might have been default. We can play with this a little bit here. And you can paint edges. We can create more lines in here. And this guy's got just a little bit more to him. And I can swirl around. Thought this was one of my other ones I loaded earlier, but no, this is the default one. But you'll notice you can force it and make it look like it has some vein work. 
and you can also do imprint. Now, if we grab something a little bit weirder, and let's see if we see what we got here in our plethora cliffs. Ooh, that'll definitely make it look like it's petrified. We can go in here and do imprint. And imprint, this allows me to drag over the object, and this works just like ZBrush's alpha. Whoa, too strong. And it allows me to pull on the object. Oh, I think we have a display issue. There we go. Just rotate a little bit there and it updates. Um, so let's go ahead and lower his strength. I didn't realize he was almost 100. There we go. You'll notice also on the bottom as you work in um, Mudbox, my camera's probably cut off a little bit, you'll see this bar start to get f more and more filled. And when it turns flashes red, you really need to save. You should be saving as you go, but you, you just really need to save. So we go in there. Oh, still too strong. So, oops, let me go back. Hit Control Z. And uh, let's go to our fall off. And we can choose a fall off. So we'll just choose something like that. And then we'll go back to strength and lower that dramatically. Again, some brushes may be a little more mild than others, but still, most of the time it comes in a little too strong in the beginning. And they've changed some of the values of some of the brushes. I should have corrected myself when I said that. Not all brushes are created equal. Oh, look at that. That's kind of cool and kind of weird. Um, so we can go in here and make another one. And you can also randomize this as you paint it, which I think is way cool. So you can actually, it'll randomize for you. You can rotate and you can have it flipped. Unfortunately, when you do turn this on, sometimes it takes a little bit more memory. You'll see each one that you put on may not be exactly the same. And you can also spin it. So you can complement each other. It's a little too noisy. Let's go and smooth this out. And again, it's using true polys. So it can sometimes be a little bit taxing on uh, the memory, so just be aware of that. It isn't two and a half D like ZBrush, but the nice thing about it is navigation's easier. You can paint while you're sculpting. I do prefer this guy a little bit more than ZBrush, and again, it's all about preferences. I'm sure you can talk your studio into switching to Mudbox if need be. And uh, there is a lot of brushes, I have to admit, in ZBrush that you won't always use or necessarily uh, partake of. Um, and that's just because they just have a lot of cool stuff and sometimes you may never need that brush. Just kind of a fact of life there. I know I've messed with a lot of the brushes in ZBrush and some of them I may never ever use. I don't know. It's like some of our weird fish hook. They've never needed to use that. It's the weirdest one there is. It's cool. That makes me feel uncomfortable. Just kidding. Alright, so we got fibers here we can add. So again, you do want to check your strength. And these fibers could maybe add to our scene here. I can increase my brush size here to make it a little more believable. Do want to lower that there to 180. There we go. Always punching those numbers too. And lower my fall off here. Not so strong. Ooh, there we go. And you can really get that petrified looking tree if you want. You can twirl it a little bit. A tree from another world. Add it to our existing bark that we started. So you don't have to use bark, but you can. It does help because you're actually using an actual image. Look at this, it works a little bit better with what we had before. I kind of like that a lot. Pretty cool. All right, so when you're done, um, let me go and zoom out for a minute. When you're done and you get exactly what you want, it's just me just goofing around, um, you want to go in here and you want to export it. You can send it to Maya, Soft Dimash too, and Soft Dimash would be able to take all these polys. Maya would have a little bit of a harder time but you can export this selection or just the model in general but in this case we're gonna select this bad boy and to do so you go to your selection and move tools select the object and you go to file export selection I'm gonna export them as an OBJ stump 
This is one we can use for the next uh, lecture. And Mr. Stumpy, and I'll add more detail too, Mr. Stumpy, we're going to take into 3D coat. 3D coat, yes. All right. I'll just call it Stumpy Coat so I can remember what he's used for. Cool. And deselect him for a second. Go back to sculpting. All right, so uh, again, you can load any type of texture that you want. You simply just go here and you add stamp. Now, if you want to keep your camera, notice like in ZBrush, you can hit uh, shift as you turn your camera to lock in. And this one's a little bit different. So what you'll do is you can actually add camera bookmark. We'll call this the Munisha. Don't be weird. The money, money, there we go. <laughs> okay. And uh, as you... Uh, rotate it you say hey I need that shot back you click on it and there you go so you can actually make all your different views and to change your view say you want a distinct view just go into the top view right click and say look through and then we can zoom in on it and then this guy you can add as a bookmark so customization is a little bit better but the quickness of ZBrush it, it kinda beats uh, my box here to so be able to snap to your camera it's actually kinda nice so add camera bookmark top okay and then we can just go back to ours and then switch the top back and forth which is kind of nice and if you ever want to go back to your perspective just right click and look through you'll go there go back to our layers and again to page up page down to go through the different ones so if I wanted to go to another one I go page down to this guy and then I can add a, a more sculpting on this guy which is for a lower subdivision so uh, I can go in here and just uh, maybe just do some more tweaking on this guy. Oops, I'm still in selection mode, my bad. Let's go to selection, deselect, sculpt, there we go. You can do more tweaking on the sub level. And it's great because as we're doing it, and let's smooth that out, as we're working on this guy, I can go in here and change that opacity. Look at that. So I can change that if I don't like that. Let me go page up. Go to this guy and say I don't like that detail. Maybe I got too excited. I can lower that. Now be careful. As you lower it, it'll go back to its former self. So when we first kind of brought him in. So whenever you do lower some of these, you might want to make one more subdivision above him. And when you do that, then this guy won't be so weird. And you saw that just a second ago. As we page down, you'll see as I change the opacity, it still keeps the silhouette because that guy's primary on top. All right, that's about it.